hello guys this is lucy welcome back to my channel on this video we'll talk about who to include in the diversity visa entry form lots of questions about who to include and who to exclude so the dv entry period is already ongoing it began october 2nd it's going to go on until november 5th 2024 so if you haven't already entered you still got a little bit of time left don't miss the deadline. Okay, so let's talk about who to include in the diversity visa entry form. The entry form itself has about 14 sections and I have a video that I tells you how to complete the entry step by step. So if you wanna do that, you can check out that video. I will link it to the description down below. So today we're going to talk about section 13 and section 14 of the DV lottery um, entry form. Okay, so section 13 talks about your current marital status. So let's talk about who to include in that section. So you have options. The first option is unmarried. So that means you are single, you, are, uh, you don't have a spouse. So click that one and you'll be good to go. If you're married, then you have two options. The first option is you're married and your spouse is not a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent resident, which also means a green card holder. So if that applies to you, then you check that one. The other option for married couples is married and my spouse is a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident. In this case, you, you are not supposed to add the spouse. If you add the spouse, you will not be, you're not going to be penalized. Uh, it's okay. The other option is divorced. So if you're saying that you're divorced, you have to prove it. The U.S. is very big on documentation. So if you're divorced, where is the divorce decree? Where are the divorce papers? You have to have that when you go for your interview. The other option is widowed. So that means you were married and unfortunately your spouse passed away. So once again, you have to produce the death certificate. Where is the death certificate? At the interview, they are going to ask for that. So make sure you provide that. The next option is legally separated. What does that mean? It means that you guys are not together, but you're not legally divorced yet, but you went to the court and you got court papers to be legally separated. So you have the option of including your spouse in this one. If you don't include your spouse, you're not going to be uh, um, penalized for it. If you do include your spouse, just bear in mind that you're not going to be able to travel with them to the US. Um, because you have a court order to be separated so um, let's talk about come we stay people are uh, in the inbox people in my email lucymwangiusa at gmail.com asking we have been together for over 40 years can i include my spouse we don't have a marriage certificate no you cannot include your spouse you cannot say that you're married and then you don't have a certificate like i mentioned before the U.S. is very big on um, paperwork, so make sure you produce documentation. Before you put in that entry, have plans of getting a certificate. Or, or better still, make sure you have a marriage certificate before you put in your entry. Come with stay does not apply in this case. Let's move on to section 14, number of children. So it asks you for the number of children. So if you have one child, you put one child. If you don't have any children, which is a question that is coming up a lot, Lucy, what do I put if I don't have any children? You can put zero and that will be it. You can move on to the next section. So if you have children, you put the number of children there. And then here are the children that you should include. Lots of questions about that. If um, you have children, include all living children under the age of 21 and unmarried. So this includes your biological children, which they're also calling natural children. If they're children, your natural or biological children, include them. If you have legally adopted children, bear in mind they're saying legally adopted. So that means you've gone to court, you've got adoption papers, uh, and they've been adopted by you. So you have to be the one uh, that has custody of the children and you're the one that adopted the children. 
and then if you have stepchildren so you married somebody that already has children so you include those children make sure that they are unmarried and they are under the age of 21. so even if uh, you and the children's father or the children's mother in this case are not together make sure you include your children uh, I've been repeating this over and over. Some people are saying, what if I, I have multiple children, but I can only afford to bring one with me? Include all your children. You will deal with the consequences later. If, if there's any problems with, with like uh, fees or money, you can deal with that later. The reason why I'm saying this is because if you omit any of the children, let's say, for example, you have four children. And you're like, Lucy, I can't afford to bring all four children with me. I'm just going to include two and leave two. Okay, you can do that. But according to the instructions, you're supposed to include all your children under the age of 21. And if they're unmarried, you will deal with the process later after you include them. It's going to be very, very difficult for you, almost impossible for you to add them in the DV entry. You're, you can add them. So, so this is what's going to happen. After you come to the U.S., let's say, for example, you win the lottery, you come to the U.S. After you come to the U.S., you're going to start filing for them using the family-sponsored visa. And a lot of times that takes longer than getting the uh, DV entry and going through the DV process. So my advice, and this is my opinion, I'm and I'm following the instructions on the dvprogram.state.gov, make sure that you add all your eligible children. Uh, eligible children is under the age of 21 and unmarried. So that's, um, that's the people to add on the DV entry. Let me know if you have any question. Um, more questions uh, are being asked on the videos and I'm trying as much as possible to answer your questions because I know time is running out for a lot of people. Most people are trying to do last minute. Don't wait, wait until last minute. By the way, November 5th is election day here in America. So you don't want to be caught up in all that. So make sure you submit your entry on time. Don't be late. Don't be late. Follow the deadlines. Follow the eligibility requirements. Follow the uh, uh, education requirements. Um, name as it appears on your birth certificate or your passport, city of birth, country of birth, uh, mailing address, country where you live today, uh, email address, make sure you have a valid email, uh, create one if you don't have one, make sure that you have it and you have access to it next year. After you complete your entry, make sure you save the confirmation number. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. Thank you for over 6,000 subscribers. Thank you for your questions, your comments, and your participation in this platform. Lucy Mwangi USA on YouTube and on TikTok. See you guys in the next video.